In today's video, I'm going to talk about the self of exam, all four modules. We're going to cover what you should not do. If you do these things, you're going to fail in the exam. I guarantee it. It is almost like it's prohibited to do these things in the exam. But unfortunately, a lot of you still do these things. So it's important to talk about this. Let's start with writing. First, we're going to talk about punctuation marks. Uh, you should use as many punctuation marks as possible. In fact, if you use more full stops, commas, semicolons, and a variety of punctuation marks, you score better marks because you're able to show more range. But there are two punctuation marks you should stay away from, the inverted commas and the colons. Semicolons are fine, not the colon, the one with the two dots. The reason is if you do the colon, it usually goes on in a list format. Like you make a bulleted list and in task one and task two, you're not allowed to do that. Your writing should be in paragraph forms. You should not use a list format, and that's why don't use a colon. Don't use inverted commas because usually we quote something or we mention the title of something which can occupy a lot of words and phrases which will take away from your word limit. It looks as a deliberate attempt from you to the examiner to reduce your word limit mistakes because if you put a quote of 20 words, you're, the examiner cannot mark you on that because that is from real life and you don't get a chance to show your own English words and phrases. So just stay away from inverted commas and columns. When it comes to exclamation marks, stay away from it in task two completely. Never use it because it is in an essay format. You don't want to show your expressions or feelings in task two. But when it comes to task one, in formal letters, in the formal letters, I uh, want to make it clear it's not informal, in the formal letters, so writing to uh, anyone, not your friend or family, you should not use exclamation marks because again, we're not trying to show feelings. We're trying to be professional in the formal letters. Now, when it comes to informal letters or emails, that's the only place in task one where you should use the exclamation mark emphasis on should because the more variety of punctuation marks you use, the better. So if I get a chance to use the exclamation mark in the informal letter or email, I will do that. You should do that. It will show more range. Okay. But anywhere else you use it, you lose marks. All right. There are a lot more things in writing and speaking in all modules that are prohibited. We have the complete do's and don'ts and samples as well. What you should avoid, what you should do in much more detail in our course. Link is in the description. Check it out. It's right now at a 20% discount. Uh, this video will just cover the surface, but this video will be enough to understand the core concepts, but the detail is really in the course, which you can check out in the description. Let's move on to speaking. In speaking, the problems are the filler words. If you do a lot of ums and ands without really thinking about it, because you will do that since we do that in normal life, you lose marks very quickly. So avoid fillers. It's the most common mistake. If anyone asks me what is the most common mistake in speaking, it is the fillers. And most people fail in speaking. So this could be the most common mistake or the, the mistake that makes people lose the most marks. Avoid fillers. We have a lesson on conjunctions on YouTube. You can check that out. You can replace your fillers with conjunctions. Even concluding words like so are considered fillers. So is not really a concluding word. A good concluding word is therefore or hence or thus. Using pauses is also important. Okay, make sure you use pauses instead of fillers. So doing fillers is something you do without knowing because that's our day to day conversation tone. But don't do that. That makes you lose marks. The other thing is doing too many points. OK, I've mentioned this in the last few videos about quality, because, again, this is probably the second most common mistake. People thinking they need to talk too much in a short amount of time, which is not the case. You're supposed to do less points and just define each point with quality. You should use long, complex sentences with a mixture of simple sentences as well and make sure each point is explained properly instead of you doing 10,000 points in a short amount of time. The third common mistake in speaking is the timing. And that happens when you don't practice at home or you think the self of exam is easy. You book it two days in advance. You don't practice. What happens in the exam is most people never do the conclusion. There are lots of marks in conclusion for each speaking part one to eight. But a lot of you miss the conclusion because you're trying to say too many things. You don't pace yourself correctly and the time runs out and you are stopped mid sentence, which makes most people lose marks. So that is, again, a big problem in speaking. Try to avoid these three main things. There are more. Again, details are in the course. You can check it out later. 
when it comes to listening. I'm going to talk about one specific part because this is where a lot of people make this mistake repeatedly. Part five. Part five in listening is not just listening, right? It's the video where you have three, four people talking and people think it's still a listening test, but it's actually a listening and a visual test. So you should also see what people are wearing, who is saying what, and uh, if there are like, specific things, like if they're wearing glasses, who has white hair, who is wearing the red shirt, and so on. The questions will ask you these things. What did the guy on the right say? What did the guy with the yellow shirt or shoes say? What did the young lady say? So when you are faced with these questions and you don't know who was the person talking about it, you wouldn't know how to answer. It could even be what did the young and the old guy disagree on? So if you don't know who the young and the old guy are, you might make a mistake here. So make sure you look and listen. It's not just about listening. Make sure you know your characters. A very good strategy for this is making three columns. Usually it's three people speaking. In each column, write down what each person is saying. Simple. You're given a piece of paper to take notes, right? Make sure you write everything down in that fashion in your notes and you will be organized. Make sure to also sequence things. Who said what? first and then the next thing, then the next thing, put it in line by line sequence so you can also understand the flow of the conversation because most of the time the questions in the listening part are in sequence. So if you know what was said first, you would know where the first two answers are coming from and so on. Uh, and note taking is the most important strategy in all parts of listening, so please make sure you do that. But part five especially, this is one place where you don't need to lose marks, but most people do this because of negligence because it's not just listening really, it should be called a listening and looking at pictures or videos exam, especially in part five. When it comes to reading, a big problem is people just looking at uh, all the options, A, B, C, whenever they are attempting to go back in the passage. I think it's common knowledge now, you should look at the questions first, then the passage, right? But a lot of you look at all the options, A, B, C, or A, B, C, D, before you go back in the passage. When you do this, it's too much information. And this is, again, something you should never do. Avoid this at all times. You will look at all the options. You'll be so confused because it's so many things and your brain is incapable of remembering all these things with the time pressure, with all the things you have to read. So that doesn't do you any justice. What you should do is predict what the answer should be. This is the best way to get the answer. This takes more mental energy but at least you will guarantee the accu accuracy of your answers. How? Well, you look at the question, okay? Just the question. Don't look at the options. Look at the question. Go in the passage, or if you're in part two, go in the picture. Now, find the answer yourself. Assume it's not a multiple choice question. Assume it's a fill in the gap or fill in the answer question. So you get the answer yourself and think what you would write down as the answer. So let's say the question is, what did Bob and Sarah disagree on? And there are a bunch of options given. And you find out when you go up, Bob and Sarah disagree on innovation. Bob wants innovation. Sarah is against that because she says it will cause unemployment. All right. So if you formulate this answer, paraphrase it in your own words, you would say that they disagree on innovation or they disagree on the progress of technology. Okay. Now, when you come and look at the options at this point, you already know the answer. You will be able to find the option matching this answer much quicker. At the same time, remember, the options are not going to use the same words that are in the passage. They are going to be paraphrased. But you have already answered this in your brain. You have already given yourself a few versions. Okay, you know, it's like they don't agree on the progress of technology. They are again, one is for innovation, one is against innovation or one is modernistic approach and the other is a more traditional approach. So now you have all these words. And if you have processed the answer this way, when you look at the options, you will quickly find the right answer, even if it's paraphrased, and you'll be able to go to, to eliminate the other options easily because the answer will be so much more clear to you. You would also avoid this mistake that takes up so much time. People will look at one question, right? Then they'll look at option A, go in the passage, and then B, go in the passage C, and then D. You see what I mean? It takes so much time to look at each option. But if you know the answer, you come down to the question, look at all the options at once, and you get the answer. Saves you time, avoids you, uh, prevents you from the trap of paraphrasing, and it's just a more efficient way.
All right. So avoid these things in all modules in the self up exam and you will be good. But if you want more detail, there is much more depth to it. Check out our course in the description. And if you did like this video, please like, share and subscribe. We'll talk very soon. Take care.